So I'm still in the Highlands of Scotland and in this video I wanted to talk about the importance of background in photography. And to do this, I've chosen my setup today with some feeders that are right outside. And the amazing thing about these is that I can actually stand really close to these feed feeders, but probably less than two meters. And the birds are, don't really mind. As long as I stand still there, they're going, they're, they just go about their business. And I think there's a few reasons for that. I think, number one, these feeders have been up here for a while, so they're very used to them. They're kind of used to people coming and going here as well. Uh, if I make movements, they'll fly away, but they come back quite fast. Um, second thing is we're coming into autumn, so a little bit less food for them. They might be, you know, looking for an easy meal. But thirdly, I think most importantly, is that these feeders are in amongst the vegetation here. So they're surrounded by branches, leaves, trees. I mean, they're already in the bushes, so anything happens, any, you know, any danger, si any sign of danger, and they have an easy escape into the branches. Uh, they're coming so close as well, I better just back off a bit. So I find this to be a perfect little setup outside that I can get really close and um, really choose my background. The first thing I like to do here is just watch them. So I like to, you know, hang back a little bit and just kind of get a feel for which branches they land on, which branches they use more than others. Um, and I'm not talking about the ones that are, um, I mean, obviously they're gonna use the feeders, but which branches do they land on before they go to the feeder or after they go to the feeder or if they have to wait about, if it's really busy, which branches do they then wait on? And those are the ones I'm gonna focus on if I can find a good composition amongst those branches. So right now, let's just hang back a little bit and just watch them. And we'll just try and see which branches they use more than others. And if there's any one of those I can use, it's actually right on here right now. As you'll see here, there's a lot of common birds here. I mean, most of the things I get here is just blue tit right there, um, coal tits, and gray tits. It's those three that are mostly common with feeders. Um, there's other birds in the area, but they don't go here that often. I have a great spot of woodpecker every now and then, but that will not come here when I'm standing this close. But those three species, they're quite common and you do actually have to make an extra effort to make a good image of those species and that's where background comes in in a big way. So first of all though, let's hang back a bit and try and figure out which branches they use more. So, as maybe you could see there, there was a few branches that they would land on again and again. That's what I'm going to be taking advantage of. I noticed particularly this diagonal branch right here. If you can see that, this one here. I noticed that they use that one quite a lot. They also went a little bit on the other side here. There's a few, um, this one here. Good few of these back up here, but I don't think I'll be able to use those. They're so cluttered, and that's where the importance of background comes in. They're just not gonna cut it, because what's behind those branches again are so close, and it becomes so messy. But I see a lot of potential with this diagonal one here. And luckily, I'm in Scotland, we're coming into autumn, and you can see some of these leaves in the back here turning yellow, and there's also berries on that. Um, there's also red berries on that tree behind there, so that can create a really nice colored background with um, reds, yellows, and greens, 
which would be a perfect for some of these birds are yellow as well some of them are blue nice color kind of coordination or color matching that could work really well so that's what I'm hoping for and I've noticed that so I see a lot of these branches they, they were landing up here like that's I'm just gonna completely ignore those branches I'm not gonna waste my time there I'm basically gonna be standing here and I'm gonna take one branch at a time and right now I'm gonna be working with this diagonal one here and I'm gonna try and aim it so that uh, I, I aim my camera so that I frame it so that I don't have any distracting elements and I try and get as much color in the background so I possibly can and then I wait and I hope that a bird is gonna land there um, and then <laughs> all right I'm gonna move in a second and then we're really going to get to see how much that color can really add to an image of a fairly common bird. Uh, I'm going to stand a little bit away now, let them get used to it again. Alrighty, they're coming right in. And I don't know if you saw, one of the blue tits looked very uh, mangled. It looked like it had some kind of parasite or something. Well, I'll probably try not to take too many photos of that because it's, unfortunately it's not going to look that nice. Now, if I see some other branches that might work, um, I'll try and adapt as I as I see it when I stand there, but mostly I'm just going to be aiming my camera in one spot and just peeking over to You know just get a feel for exactly when they land there and then be ready have it pre focused at least on the twig so that it's a very sh um, a Quick focus so that my focus isn't way off uh, Off point somewhere else. I'm gonna have a focus on the branch that I'm aiming for and that way, when a bird lands there, it's a very quick focus on the bird, focus on the eye of the bird. Now let's try and photograph something. Low is f so 5.6. I'm at ISO 1600 here, because we're in shade, it's quite dark gives me a shutter speed of 320 of a second. making these minor adjustments to the sides and going down a bit and that's just to make sure that my background is as good as possible there's only been a couple of branches that's really worked that has a nice background and doesn't have clutter along the sides or or in the background um, and there's been two here on the sides um, but the, the, my favorite one is actually going um, straight up, a diagonal one. Um, and I had a colt hit on there earlier, uh, who's kind of sitting out sideways and then giving a slight look back uh, on one of the images that I took. And that is just one of my favorites. Unfortunately, not that many birds seem to land on that particular branch, so I have a lot more success with the diagonal branch. But uh, this has been really good, but one of the things you have to be aware of when you're doing something like this is that if you keep taking photos of the same, um, of the same branches or birds, different birds but on the same branches, people will notice. If you fill your Instagram profile up with those, it looks a little bit one-dimensional. So great way to practice and a great way to get some good images of some you know common birds um, but you do want to vary out your twigs and maybe locations and uh, if you do have a feeding setup like this it might be an idea to introduce twigs to it so you make it a little bit you know make it look a little bit differently but a uh, seasonal element is a great one because the background will change um, as the season progresses 
I'm loving these backgrounds and I'm going to pay attention to them because they might change uh, as we go on as well. And some of these other branches that I've been disregarding now because of their backgrounds may change as the season progresses and we get more color in the background. I actually had a chaffinch come by earlier um, and I said there was only a big flock of uh, long-tailed tit also came around. I did kind of try and get a few images of them but they only landed here very briefly. And I think I got two frames. One is already, you know, out of my uh, out of my image, and the other one, mm, not particularly good. It's not really framed that well in the in the comp in the image. Um, but anyways, I'm going to work a little bit more with these common birds here and see what kind of else other images that I can get. I'm actually noticing now that I'm a little bit too close and that gives me an advantage. I can go back to 300 millimeters on this lens. I can lock it up at least so that it's harder to turn and then I can go down to f5 um, and I can get my I'll probably take the ISO down to 1250 then because um, I'm just so close I don't need to be a 400 millimeter. I hope you got something from this video about how a background can literally make or break an image. And um, I certainly absolutely love this background and it's, a good, it's just such a good idea to really consider your background, to move around a lot, to try and find those kind of perfect angles where you don't have distracting elements in the background, you don't want a branch going through the head of a bird or anything like that. Be careful, choose a good background, and uh, hopefully you'll make some good images. Anyways, if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos, please just leave it in the comments below and I'll consider it for the next videos that I'm making. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.